All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to plug in and get your PS5 controller working on your Windows PC using DSX as your driver. Now, unlike a lot of other software that I've used on this channel, this software is not free. You're going to need to grab the complete package in order to properly emulate and use your PS5 controller using the software. It's about $12.33. I don't think the basic package covers PS5 at all, but I could be wrong. Um, so just keep that in mind that you'll have to get the whole package to fully utilize your PS5 controller. That said, if you play with your controller a lot, this could be a very good investment because Sony never released official drivers for this. Thus, we have to have programs like this. So if you buy this, then follow me to the second step of the tutorial, which is to install it and get everything running. So the first thing I do, find the program, click install, wherever you have space on your computer, and it's about 130 megabytes, it should take no time at all to install. And then after it pops open, it'll walk you through downloading and installing the secondary drivers that make it run. And then after that, you're pretty much good to go. You can plug in your controller and you can start playing games. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the launch button. It's gonna pop open. DSX, and then this is going to walk me through the remaining driver installation, which is the virtual pad driver made by Nefarious. He's also the guy who made the Vision Bus driver that all of the free driver software runs off of. This is just like the new, improved, better software that works with DSX. I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. And since I'm familiar with Nefarious, I'm just going to click I accept the terms and conditions and hit install driver. And then this is gonna have a little pop-up that asks for permission. Go ahead and say yes to the administrator permission to install the driver. It'll just have a little pop-up showing you installing everything. And then after you hit yes, we'll have a little pop-up that says that it's been updated and you have to restart DSX. Go ahead and click okay. It might also tell you that you need to restart your computer. You don't have to do that, at least not immediately, maybe after you're done playing around with games and drivers and stuff. And then it'll go ahead and restart your DSX program, and it should look like this once everything is downloaded and ready and set up and good to go. And then all we gotta do is find our cable for our controller and give that bad boy a plugging in. Once everything is recognized and plugged in, might take a moment, it'll pop up all of the pertinent information about the controller. In fact, it even tells me that my controller has a update to improve the firmware. Uh, apparently I've missed a few updates, so I'll have to download that after we're done with the main tutorial. So for the most part, if you see a screen that looks like this, it'll tell you, you know, the, the amount of charge for the controller. If you run a, if you want to run this wirelessly, that way it doesn't run out halfway through playing a game and fighting a boss. It'll tell you how it's connected either by a cable or via Bluetooth. It'll tell you if it's completely powered up and it'll tell you the polling rate. In this case, it's 250 Hertz over the cable. Down here, obviously it informed me that my controller has an update for its firmware. I can just go ahead and click on this to update now. And then down here, it says virtual device. So the way that this works is that it pretends to be an Xbox 360 controller because that is compatible with basically every game that runs on Windows. That's good. You want that. You can just let this stay open in the background. You can minimize it. You can open up your favorite game and you can play it. The trouble is you gotta remember where all the Xbox buttons are in relation to your PlayStation controller. It's not ideal, but that's what you gotta work with. If you're playing a game and you know it has support for a PlayStation controller, because it tells you, then you can click over here and you can emulate the DualSense emulation. When you first install this software, you might need to click sync up here in the corner. Go ahead and just click that. It'll sync everything, and then you can click on this to emulate a PS5 controller. Helldivers 2 is a good example of a game that has really nice 
PS5 controller support. So go ahead and click on this if you're playing Helldivers 2. If you click on one of these other emulations, either PS4, which is DualShock 4, or the PS5 one, which is DualSense, and it stops working, that means that the game you're playing doesn't have proper support for it. You'll have to go back and click on Xbox 360 emulation in order for it to properly work again. It sucks, but that's where we're at because Sony never released proper drivers. Um, if it does work, congratulations, you might be able to see proper PlayStation buttons on your screen instead of Xbox buttons. It's always nice, but not something I can guarantee. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. That's like 90% of the tutorial. Once you plug it in and you see it pop up on the screen, you're done. That's basically it. You can go start playing with it and it'll act like your standard out of the box Xbox controller or standard out of the box PlayStation controller. They're very similar. If you want, you can dig around in the side here. There's a lot of customization options that DSX offers you. I'll talk about some of them in a future tutorial. Until then, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Um, if you want to stick around, I'm going to see if, so when I click on the button to update my firmware, it looks like it takes me to Sony's website and it gives me options to download the update right here and run this updater. So that's nice. You know, it's very handy that they have an updater to keep this thing up to date, even when I'm running it on PC. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Have a good one and bye.